2025 BMW M5 First Drive, a blend of power and precision like never before. Relation, disappointment, then justification, understanding, and acceptance. It's almost like we've gone through the five stages of grief with the all-new 2025 BMW M5. First, the elation, 717 horsepower, wow, then disappointment. It weighs 5,390 pounds, a half ton heavier than the outgoing F90 generation M5. But soon came the rationalization, comparing the G90 M5's 7.5 pounds per horsepower with its predecessor's 7.3 pounds per horsepower. Turns out it's not much of a difference. Processing this gets easier. What about pounds per pound foot of torque? The F90 weighed 4,370 pounds and produced 553 pound-feet of torque, giving it 7.9 pounds per pound-foot. The new G90? It weighs more at 5,390 pounds, but churns out a hefty 738 pound-feet of torque, bringing the figure down to 7.3 pounds per pound-foot. Disappointment fades. It disappears entirely once you strap into the new M5. And don't forget the exciting news. The wagon version is coming to the US too. BMW claims the 2025 M5 can hit 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds, just 0.2 seconds slower than its predecessor. While we still need to test it ourselves, at higher speeds, the plug-in hybrid's power is jaw-dropping. We finally get our turn behind the wheel on the Autobahn near Munich, under a canopy of gray clouds. Traffic is heavy, but when a gap opens in the left lane, we floor it and the M5 shoves us back into our seats with familiar ferocity. From 75 miles per hour to well over 170, the car roars ahead as a blue Porsche 992 Targa in our rearview mirror shrinks quickly into the distance. Each time we catch up to traffic and the Porsche rushes back, a grin spreads across its driver's face. Even though our car is electronically limited to 190 miles per hour, it feels like it could easily break 200. Maybe the Porsche 992 driver is thinking, Ja, Aberfindenis, einen Kurvenreichen way. Yes, but let's find a winding road. Indeed, her Targa, let's do that. While BMW isn't revealing the exact center of gravity numbers, it's likely lower than in the F90, thanks to the 14.8 kilowatt hour battery pack nestled beneath the occupants and within the car's wheelbase. Chassis mastery. Not only is the mass concentrated close to the road, but an array of chassis and drivetrain technologies are dedicated to controlling it. Stiffer drivetrain and axle mounts, along with front and rear shear panels, additional braces, and struts throughout the car create a more rigid structure. Adaptive dampers ensure the body stays level without jarring passengers over rough surfaces. The MX Drive all-wheel drive system distributes power between the front and rear axles for optimal cornering assisted by an electronically controlled rear differential with torque vectoring. Rear wheel steering effectively shortens the car's 118.3 inch wheelbase at low speeds, while lengthening it for stability at high speeds. The result is remarkable. The M5 steering is incredibly responsive, with the car snapping into turns almost instantly while staying so flat it feels like it exists in a two-dimensional plane. There's no perceptible transfer of weight, no body roll, and no need to manage for separate contact patches. Instead, it feels as though the center of mass is the only point with the world revolving around it. On the narrow roads of the Bavarian forest, the M5's limits are far too high to safely explore in a car nearly as wide as an X7. It doesn't feel wide though. The unyielding grip and mind-bending agility make the car feel much smaller. Yet, pushing it to its limits turns into a test of suppressing your natural instincts for self-preservation. We approach each corner at what feels like a dangerously optimistic speed, willing ourselves not to slow. Then our confidence falters. We cave and tap the brake, and coast through the turn at an eye-widening, but entirely undramatic pace. The next corner comes up, we successfully fight the urge to lift, and the result is the same. The M5 seemingly immune to g-forces twist the world outside the windows to align with our desired heading and we are off toward the next turn muttering hushed expletives we dive into one right hand hairpin at what feels like an ill-advised speed only to encounter 
oncoming Scania semi, its trailer cribbing the better part of a foot from our lane. Even at this pace, the custom Michelin Pilot Sport S5 rubber has enough grip in reserve that we simply tighten our line, hug the inside curb, and disappear from the semi's mirror. Paralysis by choice. While all the M5's tech does an incredible job of wrestling physics into submission, there is a downside, about 1,942 of them, to be precise. There are three different powertrain settings, three selectable levels of brake regeneration, three shift maps, and three settings for the adjustable dampers and all-wheel drive system, plus two each for the steering weight, brake pedal responsiveness, and synthesized engine note. Assuming you have a preferred setup for relaxed driving and one for getting her done, that leaves 1,942 combinations you're not using. Oh, and that's not counting the three stability control presets or five hybrid system settings, including Dynamic, which BMW recommends for sustained track sessions, and Dynamic Plus, which you'll want to use for establishing a single hot lap time. BMW thoughtfully allows owners to save two configurations for all these variables, which can be immediately activated through the red M1 and M2 buttons on the steering wheel. But there are so many decisions to make that, while sitting in a pull-off on the side of the road mapping out our preferred configurations, we lose focus before finishing either one. Am I sure that, with the powertrain in regular hybrid mode and the dampers in comfort, I don't still want the all-wheel drive system in sport? But if I do that, Maybe I want a steering in sport too, and now aren't I straying a little too far from the goal of this setup? And what about the brake feel? I think I just like sport mode's firmer pedal better all the time. And isn't that probably a good idea, just from a safety perspective, to always know how the brakes will react? Jeez, maybe I do, just want the all-wheel drive in normal mode. Safety third, and now it's dark out. Do the deer in Bavaria know not to step into the road in front of an illuminated BMW kidney grill? Everything back to comfort mode then, except maybe the engine note. And the brake pedal. Yes, there's an EV mode. Maybe now is a good time to try out EV mode. There's bound to be some charge left in the battery. Unless you've been running hard with the hybrid system and Dynamic Plus, the M5 is programmed to always maintain the battery to such a level that the electric motors can contribute meaningfully to performance. BMW reps tell us this was a decision they made early in the development of the new M5. Hybridization is inevitable, and with electrification comes weight. BMW's engineers decided that if they were going to have to make the M5 a hybrid, they wanted the electrical componentry to be potent enough to contribute to performance, rather than taking away from it. So, the new M5 is not a plug-in hybrid because buyers were clamoring for 25 miles of electric range. It is a plug-in hybrid because if it had to be a hybrid, a 194 horsepower electric motor and 14.8 kilowatt hour battery pack had a more meaningful impact on performance than weaker electrical components would have. 25 miles of range and a top electric speed of 87 miles per hour are simply byproducts. If you need more than 194 horsepower, Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you like videos like this. Thank you.